Mm. Hey, fellas. <laughs> Welcome to part three and the final episode in the uh, ME-163 Comet build. In this exciting episode, I get some paint thrown on it, and uh, I finish it up. So, if you want to skip the painting part and then go right to looking at the finished model, then I'll put a timestamp right about here. All right, now let's get on with it. So this is the paint scheme that the owner had uh, requested that I do. Now, as you'll see here, the splinter camouflage goes along the top of the wings and carries on to the fuselage. Now you see a lot of these comets that just have the splinter camo on the, on the upper wing surfaces and then the rest of the fuselage is modeled. But uh, he really liked this one, so we're going to go with this. He also wants it beat up a lot. And I had somebody mention in one of, in one of my previous videos that they didn't see a lot of weathering. Or they didn't think they had a lot of weathering to them because they weren't used very much. So, um, you know, that is what it is. But uh, I, th I think it's going to be a lot more eye appealing if it's got chips and dings and, and uh, it's beat up a little bit. So that's what we're going to go with. Uh, let's get on and uh, see how we're going to get there. All right, fellas, let's take a look at what we got going on. So at last we left off. I had it all primed and ready to paint. I have started painting. And since the owner wants this really chipped up and, and beat up, um, I'm going to do some hairspray chipping. Now, I've traditionally not really been that good at it, but I have been experimenting with it uh, in the last couple of days. So we'll see how it turns out. So since that's the route I'm going to take, I'm going to go ahead and lay down all my undercoats that I want to show through on the chipping over the uh, underneath the paint. So I've started off and I've sprayed all the metal areas with AK Extreme Metal Aluminum mask that off and then I've taken deck tan and I've sprayed the wing area which is supposed to be wood I think they use some kind of I don't know if it's plywood or or what but it's supposed to be wood and then I've just got a, a brown uh, colored pencil and it's probably not necessary in all reality because my chips are probably going to be so small you're not gonna be able to tell but I thought I'd just add a little bit of variation in color with a colored pencil not necessarily to make it look like wood grain, but just to, just to show there might be something under there. Now, if I was going to do this and really make it uh, leave these bare wood, I probably wouldn't do it this haphazardly. And I might use uh, some other methods like uh, oil paint and, uh, and, and do it that way. I think I might have had a video where I, I did that with oil paint and tried to make wood grain. But uh, for this purpose, I think just taking a colored pencil and making some scratches and lines and stuff in it uh, I think will suffice and again you're probably not going to notice it so next what I'm going to do I'm going to do this off camera but I'm going to mix uh, mostly orange with a little bit of yellow and I'm going to spray it until I get get the look that I'm going for and that's going to make it look like the uh, stained or protected wood underneath so once I get that down, then I can lift up my tape and then we'll start spraying the uh, hairspray, which I've decanted. And uh, then we can spray my top coats and chip away. So that's where we're at. Uh, we'll come back after I get everything masked off and show you what, to, what I'm going to do next. All right, fellas. So let's take a look at what we got here. As you can see, I've got all my masking up. Now, I'm not going to be using the Vallejo airbrush thinner for this method because I'm going to do a lot of post shading. I want to get my colors down and paint it and weather it just like it would normally I normally would. And if I were to use that method, then um, I would only be able to use that on the natural metal finish because that would also lift up my Tamiya color on the uh, the wood portion. I'm also going to be doing a lot of masking because I'm going to be uh, making a splinter camouflage pattern on top. And I found that masking um, Tamiya acrylics that I spray on top of just a natural metal finish, it tends to lift up rather easily. So I've laid down some uh, X22 Tamiya Clear gloss over the whole thing. And now I'm going to come back and I'm going to do chipping with this uh, Aussie hairspray. I think you could probably use any type. I just, this is what my wife had and I stole it from her a couple years ago. And what I do is I decant it and put it in a, uh, just put it in a jar, marked it hairspray, and I'm going to airbrush it. <clears throat> I just find that uh, when I go to spray this, it just sprays too much, kind of like using a spray can. So I decant it, I put it in my airbrush. I've already got one coat down. I'm going to put another coat down 
and we are going to see how this works. So, I've got my airbrush with my hairspray, and I don't know, the video probably won't be able to pick it up. I can see it where it's going, just based on my lighting that I've got here and my angle. But it's really easy to get, get it pulled up. Now, I, I really just want to concentrate on certain areas, but I am spraying the whole thing because I'm not going to be chipping the whole thing, but I want to have that freedom when I do go to chip it that I can chip anywhere I want. So this is going to be my second coat. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but it is starting to pool up just a little bit. And what I found with this is where it pools up, it's going to come off a lot faster than where I got a thinner coat. And that's why I'm trying to put on two coats here. The reason I'm putting on two coats is because I want to get get it consistent, so I can uh, so I I don't have any surprises when I go to chip it where it's coming off more in a certain area and less in other areas. And again, <laughs> I've uh, I've only done this. I don't. Know, I wouldn't. I, I I've probably done it more times than. Uh, I give myself credit for, but um, I am not that experienced with it, but I have done it a few times, so we'll see how this works out. Now I'm just going to set this aside to dry. I'll get my other pieces. <coughs> now once this dries, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start spraying my colors and do my weathering, and then we'll come back and I'll we'll see how well it chips. Alrighty, fellas, I've got it all painted, and let me fix this canopy a little better. That's how I had the canopy attached, just with uh, poster putty. So, I've got it all painted, I've got two coats of the hairspray on, and now we're going to start chipping. So all I have is a little bit of water, I've got a stiff bristled brush, just a flat smaller brush I can get in and get some detail and then I've got a toothpick so I've already done this one you can take a look at it I've already done the back end and uh, I'm really liking how it's turn turning out now I was I was really able to control the chipping on that back piece so um, it's been about a day since I or I wouldn't say a day but 12 hours or so since I put the hairspray on so we'll see how this comes off. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water here, let that soak in, and then we'll start seeing how this comes off. And it looks like it's going to be coming off pretty good. Now this isn't a very stiff brush. Now to start some of these chips, it's coming off a little bit right here, which looks pretty good. And it does take a it all of a sudden will start to chip. So it's not like immediate. Okay, now I'm starting to get more coming off. Now to get in here and get real fine, I can take a, my toothpick. And it's really going to scratch this off. So I can come in here and make little, little scratches. And I can come back in with my water and kind of clean those up and make them bigger. Because I think basically what that hairspray does is it puts a, a layer in between the, the bottom layer and the Tamiya paint. Which uh, keeps the Tamiya paint from... Uh, or I guess the water gets in there and, and dissolves that hairspray, which is in between the two layers which allows me to chip away this upper layer. And it's gonna take me a little while to do the whole thing because I'm gonna put chips in a lot of different places and I'm gonna be strategic about it. I'm not, I don't wanna just throw water on the whole thing and then, uh, and then try to chip. You gotta, you gotta do a little bit at a time. And again, if you mess up, you can always go back and, and touch up with, uh, with a fine airbrush. And it's probably best to do a little bit and then come back and look at it. 
see it's really coming off right there, but I'm still able to control it somewhat. And you can see this wood, the wood area is starting to come off right here. Or the, uh, it's coming off right here so you can see the wood. You can see the difference between that color and then the, uh, the natural metal finish. Which is what I was going for. Okay, now let's chip along the uh, leading edge. So we're going to do put some right along here. And you should get to see a nice contrast between the natural metal finish and the wood. So we'll let that soak in. Now the bottom, I have a it's a gloss, it's a gloss paint, and I find it's a little bit harder to chip away this gloss paint than the flat paint. I, and I assume that's because the uh the water soaks into the flat paint a little bit better. That's just what I'm thinking. And I do have some flat paint right along here, so this may take a little bit extra water. Or this uh, gloss paint right here, I can try to chip away a little bit with my toothpick and it might start coming off a little bit easier because it'll allow that water to get in under there and dissolve that hairspray. I'm starting to see some chips. I don't know if the video is going to pick it up, but there we go. Just like that. Now, if I push it where the bristles are hitting it head on, it tends to do a little bit better. So there are a bunch of different techniques you can use. Kind of popping that paint off. Let's take my toothpick. There we go. Look at that. And I think this gives you the, the most realistic chips and then uh, as compared to using a, uh, a sponge and dabbing the chips and, and or using a brush and painting chips in because you're actually chipping the paint. And uh, I think... This is going to work out pretty well, even though I've let it sit for uh, a little longer than I normally would, which was about 12 hours, like I said. All right. So there we go. Hopefully we can see that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and continue chipping. I'll chip a little bit, come back and look at it, chip a little bit, come back and look at it. And uh, I'm going to do this throughout the whole plane, so it's going to take me a little while to get this done. But uh, I'll get there, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished. So let's take a look at where we're at. So, as you can see, I've got all my chipping done. And there were a couple places where I thought I went a little bit overboard, so I went back and uh, and sprayed and touched them, touched them up, like right along the... Uh, the wing root here and a couple other places I can't remember, but uh, I didn't like the way it looked, so I just uh, sprayed over them. No big deal. That's uh, that's the uh, 
kind of one of those deals where it looked good at the time, but then I stopped and I came back and looked at it and uh, I decided to change it. So there we go. I, I couldn't really get this stuff to chip on the bottom. Uh, I couldn't really break through this, this uh, gloss paint. So if you use the uh, hairspray method, I would recommend not using gloss paint. <laughs> it was rather hard to, to break through. I do have some chips here and there, but um, I'm going to probably do something else with weathering on the bottom. I'll make it look dirty. And for 99.9% .9 of this model's life, it's going to be on its wheels. So um, that's it for that. Now, what you see on here, there are no decals on here yet. And the only decals I'm going to put on are these right here, just because I can't replicate these with paint. Uh, there, there are a bunch of other little decals, but from all the pictures, the vintage, the few vintage pictures that I've been able to see, it didn't look like there was a lot of uh, markings and stuff on these. Now, <clears throat> so I've went ahead and I made the stencils with my Cricut, and that's a vinyl cutter. I know I mention this every video that I, I mention my Cricut, uh, but I always get questions on it. Um, and I've got a I've got a video if you don't know what a Cricut is I've got a video on uh, in one of, in my tutorials playlist on uh, what a Cricut is and how I use it. Now typically I'll use this to me a sticker sheet, okay? But this does have a lot of limitations in that my Cricut cannot cut real real fine letters. But what I found is if I just use this regular vinyl uh, adhesive vinyl like you would use for like uh, mugs and cups and stuff. Uh, for uh, I don't know if this is Cricut brand or not, but it is pretty sticky. I mean, it will stick. But what I found is if you put a flat coat on it, you can actually um, put this on your model and it, it most likely won't rip your paint off. You can also detack it by uh, taking it and putting it on the back of your back of your arm or on your forehead, and it will uh, take some of that tackiness away. So what I did after I got all my chips done, I went over it and gave it a flat coat to protect it with uh, Tamiya Flat Clear. And then I went ahead and made my stencils with the vinyl. You can see here, I've got uh, some stencils made. Now I wouldn't have been able to cut these fine letters with, uh, with the Cricut with my Tamiya sticker sheet. So I, the vinyl actually did really well and they're, they, you could actually reuse them. So um, you, they can get bent out of shape, but I, I, I would be able to reuse this if I needed to. So I just slapped that on there and painted it and good to go. And I also painted all these other markings on here as well, as well as a swastika. I cut those out in vinyl, worked really well. Now the areas where I did have chipping and I painted the, the numbers and stuff over, uh, I went ahead with just a toothpick and I went through and just scratched away that, that Tamiya paint. I put it in such a light layer that I could scratch through it and it wouldn't be a real problem. So then I can carry on that chipping effect through the new uh, paintwork that I added. Now I can also probably come in here with some uh, oil paints once I uh, get to that point and I can dull them down and I can do all kinds of stuff with them just to make them fit with the rest of the weathering. I, you can also, I could have actually taken some sandpaper too and, and scrubbed it away, but uh, I think I'll probably just opt with the, uh, with the oil paint. Now on the back here, I hand brushed this with uh, Vallejo model color and I thinned it down to where it was a really thin consistency. And I just put one coat on here. And from the pictures, oh, this one specific picture that I saw, it had this kind of like a, um, uh, hand brushed job like they only threw one coat on it and I thought it looked really interesting so now you see a lot of that black peeking through there and I think it gives it just a real cool added touch now I will come back and I will touch up and do some some weathering with oil paints but uh, that's going to be after I throw on these decals now I did you can see this is glossy I did throw a clear coat on this just to protect it because I am going to put some decals on it and I didn't want any chance of adding water to my uh, the few decals I'm going to put in on to uh, get in under there and uh, reactivate that that hairspray. So I really wanted it uh, protected. So I just threw some uh, future on there and we should be good to go. All right, fellas, got it all done. Let's take a look at it. And we're going to spin it around on my fancy turntable. 
that I've got painted here. I should probably mute the colors a little bit because it kind of takes away from the model, but yeah, we'll get through it. So there we go. I am extremely happy with this one. Now, somebody had asked me about, uh, because I had glued the canopy to the canopy frame with Timmy Extra Thin, he asked why, it, wouldn't it be easier just to paint it and then glue it afterwards? Well, if I glued it afterwards, I'd have to use a white glue. And uh, because I'm shipping this, I have to build these things to uh, withstand shipping. And if I'd have glued it with white glue, then uh, there's a good chance it, it wouldn't make it through shipping. Now, I do have this uh, canopy glued down because, I mean, there's no, like, mechanical hinge. You actually have to glue it if you want it open. So I've got it glued down with uh, CA glue and uh, Tamiya Extra Thin right here at the hinges. And it's not real noticeable. Uh, you get down there and look. <clears throat> If you look with a magnifying glass, you can probably tell, but uh, it is, uh, it's glued down and it's uh, pretty sturdy. And uh, when I ship it, I'll probably put my braces here at the wings. So uh, I'm not going to have to worry about tying it down on the, on the uh, little area that I have there. There's not a whole lot of real estate there on the fuselage to, uh, to uh, secure it. So uh, there we go. I am, I am, like I said, really happy with it. The, uh, it turned out really cool. And there's a lot of, it was a, it was a rather complicated kit. Um, just because I am not used to building kits with all the, uh, the doors and, and everything open. Um, I kind of get away with building kits, you know, in flight and, and not having to open anything up. It's a lot easier, but when you get down to, to, uh, showing all the insides and stuff, it does get rather complicated on when to paint and how to paint and all that stuff. So, uh, really, uh, really happy with the, how the chipping turned out. Uh, the owner had sent me a picture of one that was in a museum that uh, was extremely weathered and is, is kind of like an inspiration. And a lot of the weathering, I think, on that one was due to just time. So, uh, you know, just time and, and being so old and all the paint had worn off. But uh, I kind of took some inspiration from that and came to a happy medium between that and what I think... Uh, is a little more realistic. So there we go, fellas. I really like it. All these little parts here, they're not glued on. They just kind of come off. Uh, these photo etch doors, and I'm gonna drop this. It's gonna fall off. But these photo etch doors are really nice. Um, what I did with these, since they are uh, uh, the brass, I uh, before I painted them, I heated them up really hot and then dipped them in cold water, and I think that might stiffen them up a bit. So they're not as easy to bend after I've after I bent it, uh, just so it would kind of hold its shape a little bit better. I don't know, somebody that's a metallurgist might uh, let me know if that works or not, but I, I, I'm I'm guessing it worked because I didn't bend them up while I was painting them, so that's good. Uh, now <laughs> this is rather sturdy because when I was taking pictures of it, I dropped my phone on the wing and stuff went everywhere, but nothing broke. Yay! Uh, one thing I do want to talk about, the owner had sent me these ammo belts, which is a really cool idea. And they're Zuki Mora. I got the little card here somewhere. Or I did. But these are the Zuki Mora ammo belts. And I did have to cut them down to fit. They weren't exactly made for this uh, the guns that are on here. They're rubber, but they don't take paint very well, is what I found. So if you, anybody's had better luck with them than I have, um, let me know. But, I mean, they do look cool in that you can, they're real bendable and flexible, and they look somewhat realistic. They're not molded really well. That was one of my big concerns, as well as them not taking paint very well. Now, I do have the ones that were supplied with a kit, which are just these short sections, which fit in here just like so. So, I'm going to, I'll give the owner both of those, and he can pick and choose which what he wants to do with that. Um, I've got a little bit of of uh easy line right in there for this little i guess uh thing that prevents the canopy from going over i mean it doesn't actually hold but i in the pictures that i've seen i think i would guess that's some kind of a a wire or rope or something that that holds that canopy so i got that in there uh the bottom like i said i couldn't i couldn't really chip a lot of this uh, that that glossy paint that i uh, erroneously put on the bottom it just wouldn't chip very well. So I just did some weathering and some streaking and uh, dirtied it up a bit. The uh, The wheels come off. They're just, they just have poly caps on them. So you can take these on and off. 
I don't want to handle them too much because I got uh, I weathered them with with uh, pigments. The uh, one thing I really like how it turned out are these uh, things that hold up the both sections. <coughs> Excuse me. These were just straight plastic pieces. They didn't have any detail to them whatsoever. So what I did is I took my little scribing tool and I made the wood grain. I think I mentioned this in an earlier video. And uh, and then I added some panel lines like right along uh, the, where the wood connects to make it look like blocks of wood. And then I also painted in like little nails. And uh, I weathered them with the, uh, I chipped them just like I, 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 I painted them with the same wood color that I did the wings. And then I uh, used the hairspray, hairspray technique. Man, I can't talk this morning. Need more coffee. Uh, and chipped them up and I think they really turned out cool. Um, like this one here. Uh, I just, I really like how that turned out. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not really bragging on myself. I just, I, I just think I'm excited about it. Um, uh, the, uh, the back end here, if you're going to build this kit and you're going to have the two sections apart, I definitely recommend getting the photo etch that, uh, the exterior photo etch that includes a surround and these little sections here. And then the piece on the inside, it really dresses it up and uh it makes it look a lot better than what it would if you didn't have those pieces so that's about it i'm gonna oh um the owner had um provided me with this uh kitten crad and uh a little cart that goes with it and then these oil drums and uh, to i guess to go along with this display and i finished these up a while ago and i've already got them boxed up and uh so I packaged it up to ship, so I don't, I can't show you those, but I will flash up some pictures of them, and uh, so you can take a look at those as well, and uh, that's about it. Let's take a look at some pictures, and thanks for watching, fellas.